Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Light Campaign V2. The first patch was just released and of the open beta, that is, with loads of fixes and hopefully enough fixes to um, keep us playing and not bugging out. I am going to start a completely new game and uh, yes, this is still the old one. I still have to write the new uh, disclaimer with the uh, new features of Light Campaign V2. But <clears throat> there were comments in uh, the comments section, and I do read the comments and I reply to the comments. Um, and they were saying and demanding that we shall start our campaign in Arcana. Because that is the Cheapo Cars uh, Dreamland. And we are going to produce and start out as a completely bog standard family car producer. Not a super luxury producer like we did with our first playthrough, uh, which ended because of the patch, I think. A new patch making it incompatible? Yeah, that was it. Um, not my incompetence at uh, and making, making decisions in game, but uh, rather other things. Important to note, with some balance changes I've been mating, mating, no, I haven't mating, been mating with my balance changes. That is all kinky and stuff. No, I've been making balance changes and these balance changes are that uh, the plot costs are now directly linked to the economic strength. So with just a few bucks starting money, you can now actually buy a large plot to start out with in Ahana. Not really in Gazmir, that's still very expensive there. But in Ahana, you might very well do that. On the other hand, with all the changes and uh, like the new features added, like familiarity, I've made it such that uh, the base engineering costs for things are much higher. That is because otherwise, in the end game, it would be completely trivial. So yeah, you have basically a project that would have taken uh, three years to engineer will now cost you four years to engineer. So uh, that, without familiarity, that is. What that means is that it is much harder to start out and we will have quite some difficulty doing that in Ahana where the markets are small. But, uh, yeah, well, let's say starting cash, only 300 million. 300 million isn't much, but the markets are small, so we don't really need that much. And let's think about what this company is all about. We hear, well, the most difficult thing about every playthrough is giving the company a name, right? Um, but what our company is supposed to be known for is that it is producing very cheaply but to a very decent level of quality. Like, it, it doesn't build in high-tech. It's a low-tech company, but it does what it does with a good craftsmanship. That is what we are going for. The company tech pool right at the start now in the Light Campaign V2 is super important for what your company wants to become, as you can, of course, research into these technologies but you won't be swimming in money um, that early that you really can push early tech and this tech is what you're going to have for the rest of the game without paying extra for it so we have to think about what to choose here I think this fine craftsmanship really boils down to having a little bit of everything and yeah this doesn't cost us much just this little bit of advantage here and mm, probably in fuel systems too because we want to be reliable if we are catering to markets that primarily are interested in reputation and not prestige reputation is coming directly from your car's reliability compared to the market's average reliability and prestige is coming company prestige is coming from your car's prestige rating as compared to the overall market average prestige so yes fuel system has the biggest impact on the engine's reliability so i'm going to choose fuel system plus three yeah we don't uh, maybe even more 
But this is such a cookie cutter thing to choose. Uh, I'm I'm inclined to not do that because uh, I'm supposed to be a good player and good players don't really need this cheating shit, you know. And um, yeah, I don't know. This light campaign V2 is fucking hard. <laughs> it's super difficult. Uh, I think we're going with this and then just see where we go from there. All right. But I think I'm going to go with a team member so that we can make the engine more rely. Oh no, probably the car. The engine re-engineering time is never really that important. Maybe we can choose two. Let's let's take a look. Uh, we want someone for the engine. Um, NA tuning expert. Level 14 though, my god, that's... And yeah, 4 in fuel systems is awesome. And all this is cool, but I'm probably not going to use much of the top end uh, tech. Because we're not going to rev that high for our normal-ish cars. Although when once we are branching out to Farinia, we might want to look into making uh, more the family sport cars or even light sports cars, which they are really into over there. Now I think what I'm going for is the i4 Master. With lots of bottom end. Do we really need that? Ah, and so little fuel system stuff. Uh, nah. No, I think we are actually going with the um, NA tuning expert, Max Jonsons. All right, let's choose him for the engines. And now we want to have something nice for uh, the rest of it. Let's see, do we have any cool experts lying around which we could use? Having someone uh, who's decent at brakes and cuts down the, uh, the cost for setting up the brake uh, quality. That would be nice to have. All right, and we are almost there. 99, 1.99. I want to have a game that is 2.0. And I think because we are starting in Ahana, I could reduce this by one. Or I get rid of uh, the body or the fixtures. Yeah, let's go with the fixtures. Okay, we have our expert team, the Moustache Crew, and now we shall uh, name the company. Oh no. Oh no. What shall it be called? I think that is a uh, pretty decent name. A Vista Automotive. Uh, VA are the cars called. And we are starting out in 1946. And um, yeah, let's see how the economy does. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, press enter here. We don't want to end up with company name or something as our, <laughs> as our brand. Uh, is 300 mi million enough though? Yeah, I think it is. We have to do with that. Okay, let's go. So first thing to check is the economy. We don't have much data to go on, but what I can see from this is we know uh, Gazmir is starting in 1940 at a rating of 0.5 market strength. So we can check the overall economy uh, and Ahana is starting out at 0.1. So we can check out the overall economy by just uh, going in here and checking luxury. So you see that luxury, if it were a uh, yeah, boom economy, it would be above 0.5 quite significantly above 0.5 and it's very much below that point so currently we are in a bit of a recession or bad times at least I don't quite know what's going on in Farinia they seem to be super low while Ahana is uh, kinda oh what does this mean hmm ah, how do we decipher that Okay, the normal economy, the normal car economy, is worse in Ahana than its luxury economy. That means that Ahana is currently not doing quite as bad. So they might be on a long-term wave which is slightly more positive than the rest. Which is a good thing for us to start out with. And 
yeah, even though it's a recession, but they are a few years until we put our car in production. So, yep, yeah, let's um, get into that, I think. We have to make our very first car. And this first car, of course, needs to cater to... Uh, which market? A family market. A family, family premium, probably, quite a bit. And we have... Hmm, a very small market that is just over let's let's estimate something like 2000 cars per month that is very little all right that is a tiny amount unless we are going to sell to some of the commuter budget family budgets family sport budgets to uh, get a few more sales all right, but this uh, puts us into perspective, like what we need and stuff. So, uh, sounds good to me. Let's get designing a new car. I think we are going to start out with uh, something that is light enough to really be handling well with the lack of brake technology we are currently having. So this body is kind of a decent average, has quite a bit of cargo capacity but it will have problems with brakes I guess unless I oh know we did we did allow the tires to become a little larger in this one and this tiny car is of course very handy let's maybe our first car should just be a very simple small car to start out with like almost a, a bit of a city car even though that those categories don't really exist yet this car should be faring pretty well overall even though it has a uh, little cargo volume you can actually check the cargo volume live updating when you morph it in the console which is running in the background and uh, that will give you this number currently only gives you the uh, base cargo volume but you can from morphing change that so also i think i'm going to go with a rear engine for this one just a very simple rear engine letter frame it is because we have nothing else and then rear longitudinal double wishbone double wishbone and steel, of course. That means that we have to buy the steel presses. But I don't really worry too much about that. It's uh, reasonably cheap in Ahana to get that equipment right now. So, let's see. Uh, grills. Yes, all the grills. Let's put a grill there. And now, to those of you new to automation wondering... Like, what the hell? Why why is he building a car without headlights and uh, even door handles? You don't need to design that. That is purely cosmetic. The only thing that is relevant are aerodynamic fixtures and cooling fixtures. They are important for um, yeah, making that work. One nice thing I see here is that we have plenty of variants of this car body. So we could branch out and just build other things. For instance, a wagon version or a light delivery version or something like that. A little bit of a problem with this body is if you have a rear engine, it doesn't fit much of an engine. And now comes the difficult decision of which head type and valves we are going for starting out the campaign with. If we are going for push rod, there is basically nothing that leads to. There is no easy out with this familiarity being high for pushrod engines, but they have the advantage of being very reliable at the start of the game. Direct acting overhead cam has uh, some of the same advantages as pushrod. It's very compact, it has, but it has much lower friction than uh, pushrod, the pushrod head, and it's very simple. So also high reliability, but not quite as high as pushrod. But also this one only really leads into dual overhead cam, which also has the cams directly acting on a bucket, um, which pushes down the, uh, the valves. So if we're going for overhead cam though, then we have a very easy way down to dual overhead cam for the later years. Also what we are benefiting from is a better 
angle of the air coming into the combustion chamber, which gives us an advantage for the octane rating, uh, the required octane rating of the fuel. So overall with this we should be able to run a little bit higher compression. And I'm going for a two valve setup. We start out at compression 7 and then tune from there. Low cam profile, this is kind of a family or city car. City car-ish. And uh, no aspiration of course. And single barrel eco carb it's a tiny engine so we really only need one maximum power 33 horsepower that's plenty oh we are going with regular leaded and standard intake of course and we want to lean this bastard out as much as we can and then probably we end up at like 60 ignition timing and ah this is this is an engine which can rev a little higher so i i try to get it to like four seven and we have free tech ball and I want to put in as this is so inexpensive and only will cost me engineering time I'm going to put in an extra plus five here so we end up at plus eight quality short cast it is probably could be going with oh yeah we probably can go with cast log we have to compare that it's not but then again no no we're not going to do that because i want to get the familiarity going for short cast headers um cast log is only really an option for super cheaper cars right at the start and no we don't need an exhaust uh, that puts through 2100 horsepower but rather something like 28 <laughs> Not even that, I guess. I, I, I would be happy if we end up at something like 23 to 25 horsepower. Uh, baffled mufflers it is. And oh, that's good. 28. Wow. That's a lot of power. Didn't expect that. So what we're going to do is bump this one up. Oh yeah, it is uh, 22 uh, kilowatt. I'm now having it set to horsepower, which... Uh, makes it easier for most people to read so let's keep it at horsepower and newton meters kind of the european standard units and this is all looking brilliantly look look at that it's all green that means we can get some more out of this engine now the valves start complaining and i don't bother there we start to really bother as you can see from the reliability like you want to step it up such that it only ever loses like 0.1 reliability with another step uh, or maximum 0.2 if you're up there and want to cram out a little bit more but let's see i want to show you what this extra five quality to the engine does because that is super significant uh, we are at uh plus three we have 39.3 and look at the octane too so that is 88.9 and then we go to plus 8, and we have 88.4, and 43.1. That is pretty good. Also, the um, uh, just the performance index, the economy rating goes down, and everything is super nice. And now we can just fill out the rest with compression. Wow, that's, that's pretty high compression for an engine like this. Maybe I should build with single overhead cam more often. Usually I just go with min maxing it out on uh, on push rod but i forgot that we <laughs> kind of balanced them pretty well so it should be viable this option now we fill out the rest of the octane we have 92 to our uh, disposal uh, we fill it out with ignition timing yeah that's a pretty good engine i like that it's looking very good nice torque curve the torque curve determines what kind of drivability and uh, sportiness and comfort ratings you're getting, to some extent at least. Uh, we have very low, well, the throttle response is very low, which makes it comfortable but not very sporty. Uh, drivability, I think, is optimal around 15 or something? Oh, I don't know. Um, or 25, maybe. So uh, the drivability will be maximum at a linear torque curve, as linear as it gets. So this bend here isn't optimal and this bend here isn't optimal, but uh, as flat as possible, but it may be tilted. That is, that is completely, 
it, it must just be predictable. That is optimal for drivability. So a straight line of any kind is perfect for drivability. A downward sloping torque curve is optimal for comfort cars or prestigious cars. And an upward sloping torque curve is optimal for uh, sporty cars. So not much to choose from here. I guess we're going with a four gear, have one overdrive, and then just get this one to spacing 100 to make it fast enough to 100 to not suffer too much. We definitely don't need a manual locker, and I think I'm going with hard long life road. <laughs> tiny, tiny tires. Ooh, those are really tiny. And I need to get down to a size. This is the maximum already. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, I need to get down to a size where I can have really... Come on. Yes, there we go. Okay, really small front tires and larger rear tires. Say plus two, does that help? No! Do we need a plus three even? I hope that's enough. Otherwise, we have to go down on rim diameter a little bit more. Because we have the engine, even though it's tiny, we have it sitting in the rear. Uh, and that shifts weight balance quite a bit so you need small front tires and pretty big rear tires to balance things out balance out the load uh, drum brakes brakes shouldn't be much of a problem because now we have balanced it out nicely with the weight being in the rear of course there's weight transfer to the front so the effect I'm aiming for here that is the main reason I wanted to go rear engine a small rear engine is to have more weight in the back so that under braking, under maximum braking, the weight distribution of the car is closer to 50-50. If you have a front engine car, which has a standard weight distribution of, like, say, 55 front, 45 rear, then under braking, it will probably be something like 75 front and 25 rear, which those early brakes have difficulties of handling. I just max out both brakes here. We'll see if we need quality, but I think we'll do. So plus four it is. And here we want to be as reliable as possible. So let's go with a factor four. Is that a factor four? Yes, it is. Uh, more cooling than required. That's quite high. Uh, we have to see if maybe it might be better to uh, drop it down for fuel economy. That is the other factor you have to keep in mind. And this is a tiny car, so maybe four seats is optimal here. Uh, basic, certainly. Put the plus two in there. No entertainment. Uh, nothing there. Uh, this will come into handy later when we have basic stuff unlocked and people actually want it. And then we go with standard safety plus one only. We don't want to spend much time engineering here. And there we go. Okay, it's still super oversteery. But overall, I think it is decent-ish. Let's check this out. So we make it a bit more um, driver-friendly. And we are just about on the edge of bottoming out. We do need more, much more grip in the rear. So I could lower this to zero. This is getting it in the realm of possibilities. 5.5 uh, roll angle, so I can up this one. And that helped a bit, but not that much. If we lower it by getting this one up and this one down, it's getting even better. Can make the rear softer, and there we go. Okay, now we're bottoming out though. And uh, I don't mind to raise this a little bit. And now let's check out if we are actually appealing to the markets we want to appeal to. We are appealing to the city segment. That is not a surprise, because this car is so small and neat that, um, yeah, that makes sense. It just makes sense. We are not very appealing to the family segment, and to well, the commuter segment is pretty... We're doing very well in already. We're not doing very well in the family segment, but I think... Once this is through engineering and through a proper factory setup, a, uh, maybe a medium one or something, uh, then we can produce it cheap enough 
in order to get this figure up and thus this value higher. That's at least something I'm banking on. Do we have any other concerns? Performance? Nope. Performance is not an issue and that is what I wanted to see here uh, in drivability. That's important. If this is negative, then your car doesn't flow with traffic, making it a kind of obstacle in traffic and thus a danger to you and other people in, uh, in driving around. So this is zero, that's perfect. It only can go negative from here. So this is the perfect value. Of all the gearing, uh, zero to 122.2 seconds. That's a drag car, if I've ever seen one. Do we actually get higher ratings here? Let's first choose the, the stuff which we need. So we want to sell it primarily to family car buyers. Where's the other one? Here, okay. And uh, let's see, city cars also exist. And of course, that is, oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. That is something we still need to optimize. And there is a lot of score in here. Oh, let's see. We have a family segment. Uh, 68.3. And now let me optimize it. So this is the brake force. Much too high compared to the actual grip of the car. And they are pretty low because under braking we are almost at a 50-50 distribution. Weight distribution. Really cool. Oh, we put this one down. Oh, we could put it down even more. And we have zero brake fade too. That's... That's a thing. All right, uh, this one can go down to like 30, I think. Mm, no, that was too much. 35, yeah, there we go. So I want to optimize drivability because the family segment really cares about that. And maybe this one to zero. Yeah, it's better, but that was a bit too far. Yeah, that's excellent. We could even lower this one a bit to uh, make it cheaper. So those uh, $36 will actually make a difference. Let's see, I want to get both of them as close to 50 as possible with what we have. And so let me put this one up by 15 and this one up by 15. There we go. And now we can lower this one one more. And yep, I think that is quite optimized oh they want one more okay this is a really good brake setup and exactly what I was aiming for for this car but we don't need to change anything here the hard uh, maybe maybe the medium tires will actually do better yeah I think I'm going to uh, keep the hard long life tires now let's change the uh, gearing a little bit to optimize economy it's really good 6.5 liters per 100 K and yeah? that's Oh, it's getting even better. But do the various segments like that? Is the question. Yes, they do. Don't have much problems with wheel spin. Oh, that was a pretty big jump there. Oh, we are below six liters now. <laughs> yes. Okay, that is a very good setup. It's very slow. 23.6 seconds. Let's just check if we are now getting into some kind of penalties here. No, still not. All right, uh, I think these penalties might be kicking in a little later, at later years. But anyway, we need to wrap this up soon because this is getting, going to go a long way for an episode. Um, we, What more do we need? I think I'm just going to make one trim, one extra trim. Uh, and that trim is supposed to differentiate our cars enough so that it can go into... Let's see, like the utility segments. So let me name those first. All right, so now that I have named the car, the uh, Vista Automotive 46, very standard, nothing fancy there. We are not playing it to give it fancy names after all. And now let's clone it and choose another body type. Let's see what we can do with that. So this one is getting, let's see, are we going to make a tiny, tiny hers or something? <laughs> or maybe a delivery van? Whoa, what the fuck is going on there? 
Oh, it's a rear engine car. How, how does this even work for a rear engine? Can this even work for a rear engine car? That doesn't seem right. What the hell? No, that doesn't work for a rear engine car. So what are we going to do? Maybe have a little bit more of a... Um, hmm... Have a more premium vehicle, maybe. But then again, who's who's supposed to buy that? Well, maybe it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea at all. Oh yeah, let's get rid of this one. A little bit more of optimization here while I'm there. And there we go, that is optimal. Yeah, we can lower it. In this, uh, the camber you have to watch out for because the higher the camber, the higher the running costs because you go through tires quicker. And you, if you have a solution which is equally good, then you go for the one which has lower camber. Okay. Okay, that's a car, all right. 6.01 liters per 100k, 45.8 drivability in 1946. Uh, for basically no cost at all. Oh, yep, really happy with this one. Let's see if we put it through engineering and the factory, what comes out of it. We do have a few engineers here. And actually, we do have... Uh, chassis and trim engineer. All right, they are all in here now, and hmm, two years, ten months. Uh, they didn't reduce much there. Let's see how long the engine takes. Two years. Well, that's not a long time. Let's uh, amp up the reliability to have two years and ten months or maybe go a little foot further three years yeah let's go to three years all right three years it is so now well the costs are pretty high but mm, nothing we can do about that it's three years and now for the factories we have 300 million and we do need uh, how much does it cost a large plot costs 81 million. The thing is, though, that we might want to, in this recession, which we are currently in, if it gets worse, then having two plots bought for 160 million in total and just putting like medium or small factories on it might not be the best idea. Let's see how it goes with large and see if we can make that work. If we're just going for a small factory, uh, it's uh, something like a small free, and that doesn't cost much. Like the land is super expensive from comparison. We even get the presses, and we could get a little bit of automation going here too to um, lower the price. We call it the Vista Main C plant for cars, and now let's take a look here, small factory. We do need, how many engines? 68. And we easily get that by going for a small two factory. And we call this one the Vista, the Vista Main E, of course, for the engines. Don't really need the automation level here because that costs a lot and doesn't give that much of an advantage. It's not really an expensive part of the car here right now because of the very, very low production units it takes. Could even go with a small one factory. But she has cost 7 million. It's so cheap. So cheap. But the market is small. We don't want to overextend here. Okay, 68 cars being able to be built there and 1.5 shifts for this. And now let's see. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that. Everything is green. It's so green, but it won't be for long. And this is the new latest feature. Uh, so when you have, like, playing the first uh, first time around the, the campaign and you're wondering, oh, I don't know anything about how difficult this game is, then you just go here after you've designed your first car and see that everything is, like, red. And uh, then you do like this. Oh, no, that's the wrong direction. Now, now the competitors are super cheap. Uh, no, you do like this instead. 
BAM! Everything is green! And you do like this. And then... BAM! Look at my competitiveness! I feel like the best player in the world! Now, let's set it back to 1-1, one, one, just like we had it. And then go from there. Yes. Now, markup. Oh, yeah. Markup kills things. It really kills things. A lot. Ouch. Commuter category, family category, still doing reasonably well. Pony, 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 pony. And the cities, of course. Yeah, I think we have to go with this as a base. And now, let's see. Oh, wow. Demand versus production is looking really good. So we could sell three times as many cars. But let's take a look before we sign off here. Let's take a look. This has a grand total of 233 million. And that is far below our budget. So what I'm going to do is to amp up the size of the factories. Let's go with a medium one and a small three, or also a medium one, so that we can stay with the mediums and upgrade from there. Maybe that works. Let's have a look. Let's go through this again. 135 cars a day. Ooh, that's a lot. And match the car. Wow, that's really, really low. That could be potentially dangerous because you can't go below 0.5 shifts and that means that we can't pull down this slider very far because then we end up at be like below we would be ending up below 0.5 shifts which it can't match to and then we overproduce engines because you can't shut down the factory But wow, yeah, that, that actually helped quite a bit for our competitiveness. Just because we are producing more cars, it's more efficient to run a larger factory. And that sounds good to me. Uh, let's take another look. Now we're still uh, underproducing by factor 2. But the economy may change. New competitors are coming into the market. It's three years ahead in time. And this value should be above 1 at the start when you're engineering it. All right, this is much closer to what I would expect it to be. And I think we get it into production right now and take a look at how it is doing on the first month of sale and then wrap up for today. We are kind of overshooting this a little bit. Uh, we said like 2000 cars a month and we are currently at 4000 cars a month, but yeah. Yes, skip to production. Okay, let's see how it goes. And... Boom, production. Okay, so far so good. We have 26 million in the bank out of our 300. And... Yes, we sold cars and made a 3 million profit. Sold everything. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> okay, guys. That wraps us up for today. Hope you enjoyed. And see you next time.